This classic tablecloth trick demonstrates many of the outstanding challenges still to be addressed for simulating co-dimensional thin materials. To address these challenges, we propose co-dimensional incremental potential contact, or CIPC, a new model and method to simulate all co-dimensions with accurate frictional contact, including cloth, hair, volumes, and even particles in a single unified model. This includes three core components. First, to address strain limiting, we develop a new constitutive strain limiting model, which for the first time provides exact strain limit enforcement fully coupled to elastodynamics and contact. This avoids both stretchy artifacts and membrane locking from artificially stiffened bending. Second, to capture finite thickness for co-dimensional objects, we designed an offset model that guarantees minimal separation, even for very thin materials. This means that co-dimensional object interaction can be correctly simulated without artifact. Third, thin material collision detection requires highly accurate continuous collision detection, or CCD. We develop a new, easy to implement, additive CCD method that succeeds in the challenging cases where we currently find all existing CCD methods fail, while also achieving comparable and even faster performance on the easier cases where current methods can succeed. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's start with strain limiting. Simulating cloth with real world material parameters creates locking with artificial stiffness and bending. Much softer membranes can be applied to get smooth flowing folds, but while the result is free from membrane locking like we see on the right, it stretches too much for most fabrics. To model real cloth materials like cotton, silk, and wool, modern simulators apply softer materials to avoid locking with a strain limiter to realistically capture cloth stretch behavior. But strain limiting is a challenging nonlinear inequality and existing methods are unable to strictly enforce strain limits as we see here on the left. This gives uncontrollable material behavior as we vary simulations. At the same time, they also aren't able to accurately couple strain limits with other forces, resulting in errors that produce unacceptable artifacts like the jittering we see here on the right. To tackle these challenges, CIPC applies a new constitutive strain limiting that for the first time gives a fully coupled strain limiting model with guarantees of exact limits. As we see here, this enables artifact-free simulation of cotton materials at large time steps. CIPC then maintains these guarantees even as we scale up to larger simulations. For example, here, stepped at large frame rate size time steps, we simulate a cotton material with fine wrinkling and without stretching or locking artifacts. Then, as we rotate the sphere, we also see how CIPC captures accurate frictional behavior, tightly winding the cloth inwards with tighter compression. CIPC preserves exact strain limits and ensures no intersections, even for challenging cases, for example here, as we rapidly pull a cloth across a bed of edge segments. When applied to garment simulation, CIPC can accurately model complex seaming and folding patterns directly. For example, here we keep a knife pleat created by tight folded layers of cloth stitched and creased throughout the simulation. Similarly, large high speed collisions with strain limited cotton materials are stably simulated with frame rate size time steps. Next, let's take a look at thickness. Simulating the behavior of a single shell like this card here can be done with a standard co-dimensional model, and so it hasn't required modeling its geometric thickness. But when stacked together, these thicknesses add up, and so we need to accurately model them. Cloth simulations have long applied thickness offsets between shells to help make contact processing easier. So the question is, can we use them for thickness modeling? The answer is that it's tricky. Even for the most recent state-of-the-art cloth simulators like Argus, if we use large time steps, we just get failures. Next, if we drop down to small time steps, then we can get simulations with some artifacts. At 10 millimeter thickness, we get a fairly reasonable stack. But as we reduce to smaller thicknesses at five millimeters, it gets worse. Until at one millimeter, still well above the thickness of many shirt materials, failures are unacceptable. 
In contrast, the IPC can simulate accurate, controllable thicknesses in stacking at large time steps without any intersection or jittering, even as we go to the thinner materials. CIPC also captures the proper indentation effects as we vary thickness. For example, here, as we drop a finite element sphere onto the stacks, we see that wrinkling and rest height are correctly proportional to the thickness. But when the stresses are larger, for example, as we twist this cloth, we need to make sure thickness is preserved. Otherwise, we quickly see unacceptable artifacts like these where the cloth thickness is lost. Along with non-intersection, CIPC guarantees a finite minimal separation. Together, these ensure that we properly capture thickness even as we simulate the folding and buckling of this co-dimensional shell model over many long seconds of twisting. CIPC applies to all standard mesh-based co-dimensional geometries. For example, here we can model a bowl of thick noodles. And notice as they come to a rest, they're complex intertwined, but not intersecting geometries. Even though we're simulating them with just standard discrete rod polylines. Similarly, we can do the same with just edge segments to create a bowl of sprinkles. or to rapidly twist discrete rods into a tight, non-intersecting braid. Here, CIPC processes up to 1.5 million contacts per time step. In the extreme, we can even simulate ball bearings by treating individual vertices as particles with strict thickness. Here we drop a tower of 50,000 particles, and so capture tight spherical packings and granular flow. Even here, IPC guarantees that sphere thicknesses never intersect with one another, nor pass through the cloth. As we can see here, as we zoom in to see their tight, organized packing. Likewise, as we've already seen, CIPC seamlessly couples a wide range of co-dimensional models directly via accurate frictional contact. Here we combine all co-dimensions with tight coupling and response. First, we drop an armadillo onto a net formed by interleaved rods where it gets caught. Then we drop a cloth over it. And finally, we pour a column of tiny spheres. So let's return back to cards. A riffle shuffle ending in a bridge finish like this one exercises many of the challenges that we've been looking at. Cards need to remain intersection free and preserve tiny thicknesses even as they interleave and resolve stiff shell energies. Notice though that a bridge usually starts with the cards partially interleaved. Here we add to the challenge and set CIPC to perform a precision bridge shuffle by first keeping the two piles apart in the initial bridge. We then interleave them by alternating the release one by one every 20 milliseconds. Here cards maintain accurate card thickness throughout, without intersection, and end in a stable pile of 15.4 millimeters, just the height of a corresponding deck of real cards. Finally, let's return back to our beginning with the tablecloth trick. Here we start with finite element tableware and dinner resting on a shell cloth. With too slow of a pull, friction can't be overcome, and our dinner crashes off. But as we increase our pull by 8x, still enforcing strain limits, we now succeed and our trick works.